So you've probably been asked to find the distance and the midpoint between two points before, but have you ever tried one where it's really hard, where you have some square roots and things? In this video today, we're gonna to do that with a couple examples. We got this first one with the pink, the points here in pink, and then we'll do another one, um, an example here in a little bit. All right, the first one, remember the distance formula is x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared, all underneath the big square root sign there. All right, so if I were to label these as my x1, y1, my x2, y2, I can throw those different points into my formula and we can figure out what the distance actually is. So for example, this is gonna be d equals the square root of my x2, which is seven square roots of two, minus the x1 is three square roots of two, that's all gonna be squared, plus y2 minus y1, negative one minus a negative five, that's gonna turn positive eventually, uh, anyway, it's also squared and then still underneath the square root. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit and you'll see that this, these points are kind of matched up a certain way with the x's both being square roots of two because that's gonna cancel kind of nicely, all right? Or not cancel, but it's gonna simplify nicely. Seven minus three is four. So we can say this is gonna give us, it's still big square root, uh, four square roots of two, all right? And it's still gonna be in the side this quantity squared. We haven't squared it yet. Plus negative one plus five is four. So this would be four. Again, you can leave those parentheses. It doesn't really matter with the four, but uh, you can square it like that. Okay, let's try to simplify this a little bit further. This is the part where if you're gonna make a mistake, it's probably gonna be here because this square, remember, gets applied to kind of each part on the inside of those uh, parentheses. Four squared is 16, but what's the square root of two squared? Well, the square root and the square cancel, leaving me with just a two. But I can't just say 16, two, uh, it's being multiplied, right? So it's 16 times two is kind of how you might think about that. Over here, four squared is just gonna be 16. So if we simplify this a little bit further, 16 times two is 32. 32 plus 16 is 48. So we have the square root of 48 now. And sometimes your teacher makes you simplify this a little bit further, like I know I do with my students. And so 48 can be simplified to say the square root of 48 can be the square root of 16 times the square root of three. And of course the square root of 16 is four. So I would say the distance here is gonna be four square roots of three. Those two things are equal to each other. Uh, that is the distance between those two points up there in pink. All right, let's try the midpoint of those two points as well. Midpoint, um, you might just want to think of this as the average of your x's, comma, the average of your y's. And you're going to end up with another point, right? If you have two points, it's going to be the point in the middle. And so if I look at my two x's here, x1 and x2, well, 7 and 3, if I add those together, that's 10. So let's maybe do that. 10 square roots of 2 over 2. And same thing for the y's, negative five and a negative one. If I add those together, that's gonna to be a negative six over two. And so you can see this is just gonna be the average, right? It's gonna be the point in between those. You might even have to, not even have to write it out. You can maybe look at it and say th between three and seven is going to be five. And that's what this is, right? 10 divided by two is five square roots of two, comma, negative six divided by two is a negative three. So midpoint can sometimes be a little bit easier than the distance formula, but that's how you'd find both the distance and the midpoint formula for these two points. Let's try one more. This problem's a little bit harder for a few different reasons than our first one. If you remember that first one had those square roots and things, this one, the two points we're working with, uh, one of them has like six plus R and then another variable S, all right? And then an R minus two and another S. And you'll see that in this problem, they kind of take care of themselves when we put them into the formulas. Um, and a lot of times the problems that your teacher will give you uh, also will do that. So it's kind of a, a trick is sometimes those variables will almost cancel and you'll kind of see what happens as we get through this problem. So let's take those again, if you wanna label them as your X1, Y1, X2, and Y2 for your different X, Y points. Go ahead and do that. And then let's put them into our formulas. If I put it into the distance formula, remember over here, x2 is going to be r minus 2, r minus 2, and that's minus the x1. Now, this is another area where you might run into trouble because we have to subtract all of it, meaning it's going to be in parentheses, which is 6 plus r, okay? Again, all of that also has to be in parentheses, which are these two parentheses. If you want to use brackets there, that'd be fine as well. But we're going to square it, and then we're going to add together the y minus y1, or y2 minus y1, which is just s minus s, which of course is gonna be zero. So s minus s, 
squared. We'll get to that being a zero here in a second. Uh, but let's take care of this first part. And we do have to distribute, if you think there's kind of two sets of parentheses, we have to deal with this first inner set, all right, by distributing the negative in there, giving me r minus two minus six minus r, right? And that's still all squared. And let me put my big square roots. We can say just plus zero over there and then that will go away after this next line. But what's gonna happen here? Well, r minus r, if I combine like terms, r minus r also cancels. So really I went from having r's and s's to now having no variables left. And instead all I have is negative two minus six, which is negative eight. So negative eight still inside our parentheses squared inside the square root. All right, so if you take care of those things, uh, really what will happen here is anything squared is, it's po is positive. So negative eight squared is a positive 64. And then if you take the square root of that, you will get a distance of eight. All right, really it's plus or minus eight, but remember distance can't be negative. So we're just gonna use the positive case, which is eight. The midpoint for this one, uh, maybe a little bit more interesting than the distance in this case. We're gonna take our x1 and x2, so six plus r, plus the x2 is r minus two, all divided by two, comma, the y's are gonna be just s plus s divided by two. And you'll see what happens there, it's kind of interesting, but look over on this one, six minus two is four, r plus r is two r. So we'll say four plus two r divided by two, comma, and then s plus s is also two s over two, oops. That'll show up a little better. And so if I deal uh, with these, uh, with the division here, four and two are both divisible by two, so we can just say this is gonna be two plus r, two plus r, comma, and then same thing here, the twos we cancel, which is just s. And if you think about whatever variables those are, that makes sense, all right? Especially for the s's, what's gonna be between s and s? Nothing, right? It just stays right where it is. That'd be like uh, if you had two ordered pairs, maybe um, 0, 1, and 2, 1, well, the y value there would both be 1s, and so there's nothing that's going to be in between 1 and 1. It's just still 1. All right, anyway, a couple hard problems here for you. We have to find the distance and the midpoint formulas with some really ugly-looking uh, points. Hopefully this helped you out.